there, but it turned out to be a fascinating experience. Just because the, the way of life there is so different. The escalating tensions after the Arab-Israeli War of 1967 finally forced the family to leave Iraq. While stopped in Beirut, Lebanon, Linda and Peter had a terrible scare when five-year-old Kelly disappeared. They were window shopping and walking by the stores, and I was circling on a pole, on a, uh, a light pole. So I'd circle around and see my parents, and then circle around and see them again. And then I circled around, and they weren't there anymore. We turned around, and Kelly was gone. And here's a little blonde American girl lost in a big teeming city where, you know, you could be whisked away in a heartbeat and our, we just about died. She was resourceful enough to remember the hotel where we were staying and, and, and uh, related that to somebody, so she was there when we went back to the hotel. Well, they drilled it into me. I mean, I would have to repeat it every single day. It was like a game. It was like a sing-song game. The woman took her back to the hotel and she was waiting for me and says, hi, Mom. And I just burst into tears. I mean, it was like, because that, I could have never seen her again. With Kelly safely accounted for, the family enjoyed an extended vacation that spanned much of the globe. Linda learned she was pregnant en route, and when the Paltzes family returned to Hawaii, Kelly's brother Chris was born. I loved having a little brother. He was like my baby. You know, it's like, oh good, my baby's coming in. You know, she's always really good at getting me to be her little soldier, you know, I mean, she'd give me the, uh, I bet you can't go to the store, buy me a soda and a candy bar, and make it back here in 30 seconds. You know, and I'd be like, yes, I can. He's like, huh? You know, little kids always fall up for all time, yeah? And so he'd run, and I'd be like, one, two. Well, he'd race, you know, out to the kitchen to do this as fast as he could while she's lolling on the couch, you know, waiting. I'd be like watching the show. Come back, 14, 15, and then he'd come back. Oh, you did it just in time. You know, she'd just convince him, and he was just so proud. I remember how much I bought into it and how much I believed it, you know, and how much a sucker I was. Yeah, that's what a big sister's for, to do those kind of things to the little brother. Chris was not the only recipient of Kelly's impish attention. With a playful streak that bordered on devious, young Kelly was an endless source of amusement for her parents. So I used to do... Of course, I never do them now, but sort of gotcha things. And this is very embarrassing for me. They love this story, but for me, I, I look like such a perfect fool. It was during the time of, you know, if you would say, to all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Really fast, you'd get a Big Mac free. My sister tells my mom, you know, if you go into McDonald's and you say, can I have a McChicken? They'll... <laughs> They'll give you the free sandwich. And she goes up to the counter and she says, Bok, 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 McChicken, please. Bok, 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 bok. Two McChicken burgers, please. The cashier is mortified, you know. And my kids, all of a sudden, they're rolling around on the floor, laughing their little butts off. And I turned and I looked at them and I said, you kids, get out of here. We're never coming back here. Yeah, that was a really good one. I really got her good. She'll never forget that one. I was actually a good kid. I really was, even though it kind of doesn't sound like it. No, I was. I didn't get into trouble, um, partly because I didn't get caught a lot of the times. But um, I was a good kid. Never mind the fact that when you hear her <laughs> version of what happened when they totaled the car, and what really happened are absolutely night and day. And she had borrowed a, my, her grandfather's car for a friend of hers to take a ride down a mountain. And so the, uh, she got in this accident where the car overturned and was totally, it was total. We used to play Starsky and Hutch. What that meant is that one person did the pedals of the car and the other person steered. And she started steering us off the cliff, and that wasn't a good thing. So my only thought was slam on the brakes and turn the, the wheel real fast, and we rolled the car. They were lucky they weren't killed. So I don't remember the story she told her father of how the car got totaled, but I think she made up a good one. I made up a bit of a story that, um, that a, a truck came tearing around the corner and it was all we could do to save our life but to swerve out of the way and instead of going over the cliff you know i rolled the car because it went this way but she never told me the truth on that one until years later 
You know, that was a bad girl thing. Creative and playful, Kelly Palsas enjoyed her youth in Hawaii. As she grew up, her beauty and charm could not hide even in the luscious landscape. Before finishing high school, Kelly would audition for a major Hollywood film. We will return to nine... You know, and at the time, we didn't know our parents were divorcing, and we were just going on this trip. While vacationing in Australia, Linda found work and decided to stay longer. At the time, Kelly had no idea that she would not see Hawaii again for two years. And when my mother told me that we weren't going to be going back, I was devastated. They both went ashen, burst into tears, went home, slammed their doors, wouldn't talk to me, kicked and screamed on their bed, and I felt absolutely horrible, but I also knew they'd get over it. I had basically a tantrum. I had like a, a, a crying fit and ran away, and it was really upsetting for me. It was really hard. I remember, you know, lying side by side, crying, you know, and and, and, and mutually unhappy about it. But I, I, I feel that she really adapted quicker. I ended up loving Australia. Horseback riding in the outback and seeing kangaroos jumping in front of you. But I thought everywhere was going to be a koala bear and was a little disappointed in that one. Although Kelly quickly grew to love living in Australia, she also had to accept that her parents were divorcing and adjust to being separated from her father. It was hard going from living with both my mom and my dad and being so much a family and being so tight and so close and then moving so far, you know, halfway across the world and not having my dad. It was a horrendous loss for me and, and real difficult adjustment. Oh, it must have been devastating for my dad, you know, when we moved. Despite their divorce, Linda and Peter remained good friends and his parents continued to provide a healthy and loving home life to their children. Well, I always figured that divorce is serious enough for children as it is, and I wanted to make the transition as easy for them as possible. She was an amazing mother, and, 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 and being a father was my favorite role. Collectively, that just made for a, a, uh, a good approach to keeping the family intact. After two years in Australia, Kelly returned to Hawaii overjoyed to reunite with her father, her family, and her friends. No one could doubt, though, that being down under had made an incredible impression on her. I had a thick Australian accent when I went back. Thick. And, um... Yeah, everybody teased me, but I had all my same friends, and... And I had done some growing up when I was there. You know, I had really changed. And then when she came back, she was a woman type, <laughs> not a... Not a, not a woman yet, but not a, the same Kelly that was, you know, running around tomboy skateboarding. I was a tomboy for the longest time, and um, I had no breasts, no figure. You know, I had all the jokes when I was young about flat as a board, and um, I sort of blossomed a little when I was living in Australia and filled out a little more, and um, came back a woman, you might say. <laughs> Now nearing high school graduation, Kelly began to think about her career options. I had no desire to be an actress. I wasn't, that wasn't my big career choice. I thought I was gonna be an advertising executive or, um, or a social worker. Fate intervened when a photographer who was simply passing her on the street asked to take some photographs of Kelly. Those photographs were sent to Los Angeles, leading to Kelly's first film audition for The Blue Lagoon. Not until you say I love you. That's what a husband's supposed to say. How do you know? I just know. Okay. I love you. Okay, good. That's good. Okay. How'd that feel to you? It was a lot easier. <laughs> Brooke Shields won the lead in the Blue Lagoon, and Kelly returned home with aspirations for acting. Before long, she was appearing in print ads, commercials, and television series, including a guest spot on the hit local show, Hawaii Five-0. Kelly gave up her ambitions for advertising or social work and moved to the mainland to study drama at the University of Southern California. It was really a rude awakening, because I came from Hawaii, which was so beautiful and idyllic, and I had chosen USC, and I looked out the window at this concrete village and I just started to cry. It was like, oh my gosh, I am really on my own. While still in school, Kelly found work as quickly as she had in Honolulu, enjoying a recurring role on the soap opera Capital and a guest spot on the popular series Quincy. And it was, wow, 
home. She's a guest star on Quincy. And we were so excited for her. It was a lot of fun. As she began to get more roles and see her name in print, Kelly also noticed that many people had some difficulty with her last name, Palsis. I would get things like pelvis and palsy and uh, polis. You know, just the horrible, and so I was sick of it. So I said, okay, I'm gonna keep Kelly, I'm gonna keep my initials. Anybody on the set who wants to help me, P names, come on, you know, throw them out there. And somebody said Preston, it was like one of 20 names. I said, okay, that's my new name. I wish she had gone to my maiden name, Kelly Reynolds. I said, where'd you get Preston from? But I don't know, it just didn't quite work, and I wanted to keep my luggage. Her uh, adopted name, of course, was my name, and I later verified that that's the only one in the world. So I was kind of hurt that she dropped it, but that's showbiz, I guess, huh? With a new name and show-stopping beauty, Kelly's early career saw her cast in a variety of films, including the teen sex comedies Secret Admirer and Mischief. In some of these early films, Kelly had to face a difficult issue confronting many beautiful young actresses, on-screen nudity. She says, Dad, I'm going to, uh, I just wanted to call you up and tell you, ask you, tell you, that I'm rehearsing for this partially nude scene in this movie. It was the first time I had done any sort of nudity. It was a love scene, and um, it was funny, at least. At least it was a humorous one. There your daughter is on this humongous scene, nude. And I'm sitting there, and I grab the chair, and I go, oh, my God. Although she was working steadily, Kelly saw that her looks were typecasting her and began a fight for better roles in better films that would last for many, many years. She remained committed to her dream with unflagging determination and the help of Scientology, which was introduced to her by an acting coach. Scientology has helped me in my acting as well as in my life as a person who is able to be an actress. While Kelly was in her early 20s living in Los Angeles, she met a young actor named Kevin Gage and quickly fell in love. Unfortunately, Kevin did not make a perfect impression on Kelly's dad at their first meeting. Kevin sort of came out of the room with a towel around his waist, and my dad was not thrilled. Uh, be perf perfectly frank, uh, I did not like Kevin. He was not good enough for my daughter. Make no bones about it. Her dad came around and Kelly married Kevin Gage at home in Hawaii. After two years of marriage, however, Kelly's relationship with Kevin was troubled, causing her grief and pain. They were in a very tumultuous relationship um, before they got married and then during, and um, she was having a very difficult time with it. During a welcome separation, Kelly traveled to Vancouver to work on a film called The Experts, co-starring opposite John Travolta. For both Kelly and John, meeting on The Experts would be an unforgettable experience. We were good friends with John separately. And I said, I know the girl that's coming in tomorrow, and you're going to fall in love with her. She'll be somebody that you want to marry, and it's a shame because she's already married. Um, and then after he met her, he said, you know what, you're absolutely right. I thought, oh, he's handsome and um, very charismatic, and we just had a great screen test. Kelly and John did feel an immediate attraction to each other. At the time, however, Kelly was still suffering from the difficulties in her marriage to Kevin. Every morning, you know, he would call me and I would be just devastated and sobbing and I would go to work and I was throwing up and it, I, I was so, so upset. We became friendly, you know, but then as work uh, evolved, uh, we, we started getting closer because I, I was trying to help her with her, her situation with her, her then husband. And uh, John would actually do these Scientology assists on me that are, um, one's called a body calm, another is a touch assist. And I would feel so much better. I was like, I was able to work because I was devastated. They both um, are people who have a lot of integrity, so they didn't act upon anything because she was married. And, and, but they did have kind of a chemistry going on, and they became friends. Anson, and Linda, and Kelly and I were like an inseparable foursome. And uh, I think she realized then that, that life could be fun. We would play, we would improv, we would laugh. I just felt like, wow, I wish real life could be like this. And he said, well, it can be. When the film ended, Kelly had to return home to Kevin and the troubles of her relationship. It was not long before she had to end the marriage. I was devastated for her because having been divorced, I know how painful it is. 
but she's a beautiful young woman and she's very charismatic so i knew things would happen for her no matter what after the end of her marriage kelly would spend several years searching for love and nearly miss the chance to marry the man of her dreams cindy hallie claudia I'm Sally Kellerman. This is an intimate portrait of Kelly Preston. In the, late in the late 1980s, Kelly Preston was looking for a way out of the disappointment that followed the end of her marriage and her dissatisfaction with the role she was getting. With fresh commitment to her craft, Kelly turned to comedy and got a role in the film that paired Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger as twins. It was very clear to everyone, to the producers, to Ivan Reitman, who was the director, and myself, that she was the right woman for the part. I loved doing Twins. I had so much fun, and it was a great learning experience. And Arnold is just a gem. He always makes you feel comfortable, and he's such a playful guy, and he's always teasing people about foreheads. Your forehead. Hi. Excuse me. Excuse me. She's not bad. I had no idea that, that this magazine said things like this inside, inside them. You didn't? Where have you been, a desert island? As a matter of fact, I just got here yesterday, and I already found my brother. Your brother? That's right. My twin brother, Vincent. Twins? The entire process of filming uh, Twins was an absolute pleasure trip for me. Uh, because Kelly Preston was in it. With her career seeming to move forward with new momentum, Kelly began to enjoy life again, and love found her quickly in the form of actor George Clooney. It was a very spontaneous relationship. Um, we ended up living with each other immediately, and um, he, for my birthday, got me a pig named Max, who I adored. He was uh, smarter than a dog. He would jump up on the bed and sleep and at the parties we'd always be feeding him food he like a dog party. yeah he had fun at the parties he slept like a little dog right at the edge of the bed mm -hmm. when i first broke up with george i um went and lived on linda and anson's floor for three weeks and was sobbing but and just like complete grief and you know knees out from under you type of thing but i ended up because I think I grieved so much, I allowed myself the grief, I was able to get through it. She was sad, you know, as, as you would be when you break up with someone that you love, um, but she gets her feeling out, she cries, and then she's able to let it go. Shortly after her breakup with George Clooney, Kelly met actor Charlie Sheen and began another intense relationship very quickly. I think Kelly has a really amazing ability to see people um, for who they are and just to become very intimate on an intense level very fast. When I fall it's like fall hard and sometimes the spontaneity of the moment is not quite right for me but uh, I, I was just a little concerned that the, the the lifestyle was a little too fast and furious I guess for a, a, an old conventional geezer like myself Although Charlie and Kelly became engaged, the wedding was never to be. The relationship ended suddenly in early 1990. Once again, Kelly turned to her closest friends to help her through the heartbreak. I stayed with Piper at that time. She was amazing because she let me sleep in her bed. You know, she had a one-bedroom apartment. She slept on the couch. And I just, I have the greatest girlfriends because they're always there for me. I have such great friendships, and I've got my core girls. You know, there's like seven or eight of us. There is Romy, Linny, Linda, Piper, Keisha, Gwenny, Simone, myself. She is kind of a pit bull in a sense of loyalty, Absolutely. you know. Um, there's nobody I would rather have in my corner. Everybody has a nickname. I don't know why, it just, it just, their, their names morph in my mind and then they adapt it and then everybody calls them that. It's very bizarre. Stinky. <laughs> Talking skinny Lenny. <laughs> Mine changes constantly. Always. Um, it was uh, Roma Loma, 
Rama, Rama Kamangamona, because she's from Hawaii. There's a lot of Hawaii things going on. <laughs> Rami Sandwich. Now, this week, it's Rami Sandwich. Only a few months after her engagement to Charlie Sheen was broken off, Kelly traveled to Vancouver for a film. Coincidentally, John Travolta was there filming Look Who's Talking To and staying in the same hotel. For the first time since they met three years earlier, John and Kelly were both single and able to pursue their attraction to each other. I said, are you interested at all in the possibility of, of like, going out with me, you know, in a romantic way? And she said, no, I'm definitely interested in that possibility. At that point, I was through with whirlwind, you know, crazy relationships, and, and uh, we took it very slowly. Johnny took his jet down the runway at this speed, high speed, and made this military takeoff, which was, so the plane kind of went like this, and then straight into the air. Of course, Kelly watched the plane like this. She just went, oh, oh. It was just as sexy as hell, I and mean, it was amazing. Although Kelly had wanted to take it slowly with John, the two could not deny that they were meant to be together. As the end of 1990 approached, I was pleased and honored to be among the guests at the private New Year's Eve party in Switzerland, where John would surprise Kelly with an engagement ring. Johnny wanted to take everybody to Switzerland, and it was over Christmas and New Year's, and it was absolutely the most spectacular trip. I had contemplated us getting engaged uh, f for a while, but I didn't know it would be on New Year's Eve in, in uh, Switzerland. And I decided, what better way to start the new year than to ask her tonight? It was a stroke of midnight, and I had no idea. He kept trying to propose. He was saying, honey. And Sally Kellerman, she was over him going, John, John. He's like, wait, not now, Sally. She kept uninterrupting to try to wish me a happy new year. She said, no, but John, I just want to tell you. And he's like, hold on a second. Honey, will you? John, this is so fabulous. So finally, she got the idea, and I, I, I successfully turned around and asked Kelly to marry me. She cried, you know, and and he cried too. And it was it was just so beautiful. Okay, so then we were engaged and we were planning to get married and I had designed my dress and, and we had this big wedding plan in New York and it turned into a nightmare. It was an absolute fiasco. The planning that had to go in to to all of what that they wanted to accomplish, uh, you know, was giving me a headache. Kelly and John canceled the wedding and retreated to the Caribbean to discuss their future. And then we thought, well, let's, you know, we we're talking about having babies after we go, well, let's just try and, you know, and use no protection. It takes everybody six months or a year or something like that. So, you know, let's just start with no protection for a while. Boom first time, it was like, whoa, hello. She was very excited. I mean, that's definitely, uh, when, when Kelly got pregnant, that's something they both, you know, hoped and prayed for. I mean, absolutely. And so Kelly is pregnant at the time now, but I don't hear the M word. So I get John aside and he'll say, John, you know what? I says, I would really appreciate being a father-in-law before being a grandfather. Well, he never had to worry about that because we were always planning to get married once we got pregnant. We decided then to elope to Paris, which was, again, so romantic, so great. It was the perfect ceremony, but the minister had such a, a Sikh French accent that we couldn't understand the word. The words were gorgeous, but because of his heavy accent, it was like this. Uh... Richard, you line a threatening line for Ian's going to now, now John. You may kiss your bride and hug your well. Afterwards, we went out onto the streets of Paris, and um, uh, there was a violinist playing. Threw, um, we threw flower flowers, petals. flower petals, me and Lenny. Baskets of petals. It was pretty. Yeah. Pretty. It was just so great. It was so perfect and so easy, and so romantic. Kelly Preston married John Travolta on September 5th, 1991. Soon after the birth of their son, a nearly fatal accident aboard a jet piloted by John would threaten the lives of the entire family. We were I was doing, so I got Boom Boom Mancini to teach me how to box and to throw a really good punch. Oh! On the success of Jerry Maguire, Kelly continued to pursue small, meaningful roles in A-level films. 
With each film, her roles grew more significant. In Jack Frost, she appeared with Michael Keaton, and in Holy Man with Jeff Goldblum and Eddie Murphy. In 1999, Kelly re-teamed with her friend Laura Dern to film Daddy and Them, a film by Billy Bob Thornton. She's such a uh, uh, sort of fun-loving person on the surface, but underneath she's, you know, very serious and kind of, um, uh, you know, real compassionate. And that's what the character needed to be. She is a completely different character. Uh, Southern, um, sort of a uh, little bit clueless, very highly sexed. She was able to do something that, uh, that did set her apart and, and showed people that she could play a real, you know, character, be a character actress. The streak of projects continues with For Love of the Game, a baseball movie in which she stars with Kevin Costner. She's a good actress and it needs, an, that's what we needed more than a personality. We needed an actress who was willing to uh, play the, the uh, colors that the script uh, presented. I completely believed Kelly when she became this character in For Love of the Game. And I think that's what won her the role more than anything. I love looking for different characters and challenging myself and, and trying out different roles, you know. So it's just fun. It's fun to change it up. That's what makes my job fun. I have a 6 o'clock plane. We can just keep doing oh, it. Oh, God, that was terrible. <laughs> that was awful. I you know, it's really bad. Wait a sec. I think it's probably a form of expression and a communication and and getting to be different people you do get to explore so many different facets of your own personality and of other people's personality she has a lot of tools as an actress and so if she trusts you i think she would give those things to you i think her chances of becoming one of the best-known actresses around are very, very good. While Kelly's entire life seems to live under a charmed star, a rare illness threatened to take the life of one of her closest loved ones. The portrait of Kelly Preston. Kelly Preston's love for her friends and family has been the grounding influence in a business and a lifestyle that make normalcy difficult. When Kelly's mother, Linda, became ill, nothing could stand in the way of Kelly nursing her to health. She won't talk about it, but she's been sick for about 15 years, and it wasn't until about three or four years ago that it was actually diagnosed. She's got fibromyalgia, which is um, a terrible... Uh, aching throughout your entire body. I had heard from my aunt that things were getting really bad and was so surprised to see what she looked like and immediately went into action of trying to get her better. She just totally handled it. She, she got all the information. She got the best doctors. She um, pretty much took control of the situation. And um, slowly got her on a program to get her better and now you can't even tell don't ever tell kelly you want to do something because she'll make it happen the next thing i know we're going skydiving and she said oh gosh i wish you were staying because i would go with you i said you would not she said oh i would and my mom parachuted. It was so cool. We both decided the biggest thrill in our lives is jumping out of airplanes and having a baby. Kelly certainly leads an exciting and glamorous life. Her husband, John, owns three jets that carry the family between their homes in Maine, Los Angeles, and Hawaii. Still, her wholesome, loving upbringing grounded her early with an easygoing way of living, which has molded in Kelly a serious yet playful outlook on life. I think if you have a real strong basis of who you are and have a strong home life. Everybody just keeps each other grounded, you know. I think we've managed to, to stay quite normal in and amongst all of it. A date for her could be as exciting as getting in that jet and going, flying somewhere, you know, wonderful in the world, or it could be camping in a tent. For her, it's more about the people she's with. What Kelly has is a, she has a good demeanor, you know, she's a, uh... She, you know, she's as beautiful inside as she is out. She loves caviar. She loves caviar, and oftentimes when we're together, 
She likes she to may get have a little caviar. Let's have a little caviar try. You always expect it now at this point. We're totally spoiled. Yeah, so Completely. we don't get it. Kelly, where's the caviar? We have to go. But it's never, it's not, you never ration it. When I buy caviar for my husband and I, it's like a nice amount. When we go to her house, it's a terrine. It was her birthday, and we're flying to Arizona, and for some reason, they left the caviar in the cooler. And we're on the jet, and they're just getting ready to take home the jet. And Kelly, they're like in line, ready to go. Okay, five, four. And Kelly goes, excuse me, stop the plane, please. Um, can you open our caviar? We were just taxiing. We weren't like taking off or anything like that. So I was like, wait, 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 stop. And so they stopped in the middle of the taxiway. They're like, ah, oh, Jesus, Kelly, pop the caviar. Can we go now? And then, I mean, it's really embarrassing, but yeah, it's definitely true. I love really good food, and we always have, like, delicious meals and great food, but I love junk food, and I love, like, trash food. I love, um, uh, my husband will kill me, but I love Spam, and corned beef hash, and tater tots, and all that junk. I have watched this girl eat a Spam sandwich, and this is her favorite meal. Living life to the fullest for Kelly Preston has meant caring for her family and friends, loving without fear, and relentlessly pursuing her dreams. We both believe in the joy of life, too. You know, it's, it's, pleasure is what life is about, ultimately. So we kind of feel like the, the glory in life is in the details. They're just uh, as regular as you'll ever run into in this business. They take their life seriously and not seriously all at the same time. Her commitment has rewarded her with not only riches and fame, but a loving family, beautiful son, and a gratifying success that comes only from setting difficult goals and working very hard to achieve them. Just knowing that I could make it and do it on my own, you know, I'm just happy where I'm going. <laughs> the boobs there. Yeah, they have no makeup on. Oh, you look uh, great. Oh, yeah, you're natural, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so talk about me. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. Is it really hot in here or did I just get embarrassed? Oh my god, you guys. Is it really hot in here or did I just get embarrassed? Kelly Preston's family is about to grow. She and John Travolta are anticipating the birth of their second child. Needless to say, they're thrilled. Family has always come first for Kelly, but expect to see more of her on the big screen as a southern beauty, a mysterious French woman, and an alien. For Intimate Portrait, I'm Meredith Vieira. Special occasions call for... Coming up, you don't need an appointment to see good doctors. Oh, good, because I have a scratchy throat. I mean, Chicago Hope is up next on Lifetime. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I knew that, yeah.